a story that's touched the hearts and souls of millions of us. Keiko, the killer whale, star of the Free Willy movies, was in danger of dying. And now Oregon's orca is on his way to health and happiness in the same sea where he was born. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Gianola, and welcome to this Coin6 News special report, Keiko's Journey Home. It was the will of children everywhere that helped Keiko go home, a journey towards freedom we followed every step of the way. What was his capture really like? How did Keiko's sad story turn into action that saved his life? Why did he come to Oregon? How does Keiko really learn his lessons so he can eventually go free? In the next hour, we'll share this incredible story. Coin6 News reporter Lisa Balick has followed Keiko's tale for several years. She steers the course through his journey to show us how an impossible dream really can come true. The little orca who could. Keiko took his first breath of life in the North Atlantic Sea off the coast of Iceland. A land near the Arctic Circle where fishing sustains the economy and feeds the top ocean predator. Maybe Keiko likely started life swimming alongside his mom, dad and lots of relatives. Killer whales are highly social creatures, traveling in tight-knit family groups called pods. This was supposed to be Keiko's life forever on the open sea, but it ended when he was just two years old. They are killer whales. Whale hunter John Gunnarsson captured Keiko in 1979, a time when Icelanders caught killer whales to sell to aquariums and entertainment parks. Keiko's captors believed Keiko would never return home. So they will never find the Keiko's family, never. Keiko was torn from his family, likely to never see, hear, or speak to them again. Keiko moved out of the wild whale world and landed in a captive entertainment world, first in Canada for three years. Then owners of a Mexico City amusement park paid $350,000 to own Keiko. Performing five shows a day, Keiko brought in millions of customers to Reno Aventura for 10 years. Keiko learned to recognize more than a hundred hand signals. In return, he got food and physical contact. Then suddenly he catapulted onto the worldwide stage. Come on, Willie! In 1993, Keiko starred in the movie Free Willy. The leap to freedom was performed by a mechanized model. Everyone cheered until they learned the real-life star was really in trouble. This is really what sent freedom fighters into action. An article in Life magazine in November of 1993 saying the whale was dying, cramped in a tiny pool in Mexico City, his water 80 degrees. Keiko needed a savior, and time was running out. His movie home was his real one in Mexico, a chlorinated swimming pool close to 80 degrees, awful for this Icelandic creature. A star with fame, but misfortune. Keiko was in trouble. We need a few more million dollars. Children around the world besiege Warner Brothers, the movie's maker, to free Willy, or at least find him a better home. In Oregon, school children wrote to celebrities and saved their pennies to try and bring him to Oregon. There was a new aquarium in Newport, dedicated to animal education, not entertainment. So we were looking for a facility that owned its own land, that was on the coast, that was in a cold water climate, and that had an infrastructure, that had animal care people there, and Oregon came out on top. Little did Keiko know, these kisses were about to be his last. While Keiko kept performing in Mexico, secret negotiations got underway in Oregon in 1994. The Free Willy Keiko Foundation, a nonprofit group, was formed to rescue, rehab, and perhaps release Keiko. But a big whale needed some big money to pay for his health plan. Two million dollars came from Warner Brothers, two million from telecommunications giant Craig McCaw of Seattle, a million dollars from the U.S. Humane Society, 
Operation Free Willy was underway. February 1995. The Keiko deal is signed, but this time there is no price tag around his neck. Instead, the Mexico park gives him up for free, getting goodwill and the rights to his image in return. The orcas moving to Oregon. I think that this is the beginning of a, a very uh, happy ending. In Newport, Oregon, a $7 million home gets underway in a prime spot on the edge of a bay next to the Pacific Ocean. The new pool is 25 feet deep, 100 feet long, Keiko's 20 feet in length. The pool is three times the size of his Mexico home, a more natural design, and includes underwater windows to let the public peek at the movie star. His tank is then filled with thousands of gallons of cold seawater. In Mexico, Keiko is packing in the crowds before moving day. His fans tell me they're sad to see El Gordo, the fat one, going to Oregon. But they wish him well. He's going to have a bigger house and a wife. Well, at least a bigger house, if he can survive the trip. On January 7, 1996, Keiko is lifted from his Mexico pool by a giant crane and placed in a water-filled box on a flatbed truck for a ride to the airport. With two stops to refuel and change Keiko's water, it takes 14 hours before Keiko finally arrives in Newport. one hitch when a cable pulling his box out of the plane gave way. Despite the rain and the delay, hundreds of well-wishers lined the three miles to the aquarium. United Parcel Service picked up the $200,000 shipping tab. Aquarium President Phyllis Bell signs for the two-ton special delivery. I'm too nervous to even worry about it. Thanks. Give me a hug. Welcome to Newport, Keiko. There he is, Keiko the killer whale, 17-year-old male orca, weighs about 7,000 pounds, and uh, he's about to be put into his new home, a huge 2 million gallon pool here in uh, Newport at the Oregon Coast Aquarium. Wow, that's uh, pretty amazing to see. They're gonna put him down on that shelf area, pull the sling apart, and then uh, check him out, make sure he's okay, and then it's gonna be up to Keiko to hop on in and check it all out. Keiko was not sedated for the trip. Unlike humans, orcas are conscious breathers. Whales have to stay awake to breathe. So half their brain sleeps while the other half is awake. So Keiko's awake for the whole move. <laughs> Maybe he's ready to go, <laughs> that's for sure. This is, I mean, this is quite an exciting moment. They've worked for a long time. There he goes. The first big dunk. A guy on the move. He's in. He's in. There's even some people waving American flags right now. They're pretty excited. Keiko moves into his new home swimmingly. But will he adapt to his new environment? Keiko was rather quiet his first few days in Oregon. Turns out he was a very sick whale. Coming up, we'll show you up close why Keiko's move to Oregon was a lifesaver. And you'll get a rare glimpse at how his trainers teach him some new behaviors like eating live fish.
January 8, 1996. It's not even 24 hours since Keiko's arrival, but he's about to meet his Oregon fans face to face. Long before the aquarium opens that morning, kids are lined up, cuckoo for Keiko. Keiko is just as curious about the crowd. Killer whales have killer eyesight. He can see his fans quite clearly through his new underwater windows. What do you think? Uh, he looks smaller than the movie. <laughs> looks sick to me. Keiko is sick and small. You can see his skin with bristle brush-like lesions that are caused by a virus. Doctors believe this cold water creature lived too long in hot water. They hope the natural seawater in his Oregon home is the cure. All the water that they take is from the fish. But because he's losing so much skin, because he's changing skin so much, he needs to be hydrated. Even though Keiko lives in water, he doesn't drink it. His trainers have to inject water into hundreds of Keiko's herring to make sure he's getting enough fluid in his first few weeks in Oregon. Keiko is small for his age. He weighed in here close to 8,000 pounds, but that's underweight for an orca. And he's seriously out of shape. He's got all this muscle that really hasn't been worked and, and challenged, so he's not uh, lean and, and mean, he's just kind of flabby. So, so if he's underwater and he's motionless and he, he wants to start again, it starts from his head and he starts to undulate his body and, and try to pick up speed. And then when he stops, you kind of see this jiggling no, really, he's just, just a big marshmallow. I've never seen a male whale this mellow. Not exactly killer whale material. His trainers get to work. Keiko's public performing days are over, but his toughest workouts were just beginning. bit of exercise out of it. He's had a lot of play time involved and still got some work accomplished at the same time. Good boy, open! Yeah! Spit it out and play with it! Yeah! Sometimes Keiko's visitors got a glimpse of the big whale with a bit of an attitude. What you're gonna see is Carla's gonna call him and ask him to go to a shape. There's a little triangle she's got in her hand. That shape is Keiko's shape. We're teaching him that whenever he sees that to appear wherever that's at. Keiko's kind of being lazy today, like everybody else here in the Northwest. It's a sunny day. <laughs> now what we're doing is we're turning our back because we want him to pay attention to Ken. Ken's asking him to pay attention to him, not us. He wasn't sent down here. You can see who's having the last laugh here. Big and high. Big and, that's not big and high. What do you call that? <laughs> they never push Keiko. Yeah! We have to get our energy level up. Every time we come out here to work with him, we have to act like it's a brand new day. Teaching a whale new behaviors takes time. Come on. How would you coax a whale to swim in one gate and out the other? He literally, as far as we can tell, does not realize that the second gate goes right back into the same pool. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Need some reassurance? What about getting in with him and sort of walking with him? Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, he does look serious this time. Come on, pull that fluke around. You're there, come on. Come on, Cake. Pull your tail. You got plenty of room. Pull your tail. That a boy. Thank you. The 
Cold seawater and extra exercise gradually increases Keiko's appetite. He's now eating a couple of hundred pounds of fish a day. That's almost double his Mexico meals. By the end of 1996, Keiko's first year in Oregon, he had gained a lot of muscle. And there was one way to weigh a whale. A giant crane lifts him up for the weight check. He tipped the scale at more than 9,000 pounds. Remember, he's eating about 90,000 calories a day. Much of his skin virus had vanished, thanks to pure seawater and a better diet. With his health on the mend, Keiko now gets the attention of scientists. They begin studying his body. His oxygen and blood are monitored, checking to prevent diseases as well as dehydration and anemia. His blubber is tested for density. Uh, we'll take a number of measurements from different areas of the body just so that we can get a, a comprehensive map of, of his blubber coat. Because he's in good shape now, he's in good condition. Keiko's dorsal fin had risen about a foot, but that's not much. The droop is seen in most captive whales. The dorsal fin has fallen over mostly because I say he was a pool potato. He spent a great deal of time resting on the surface <laughs> in Mexico. Um, but he also swam in one direction most of the time, which was counterclockwise. That water pressure pushed it over, over time. But his body is clearly improving. When the orca arrived in Oregon, he could hold his breath only for about three minutes underwater. Now, he can hold his breath underwater for 16 minutes. That's an important skill for hunting food. It's been 18 years since Keiko ate live fish. Hey, when you've got room service, why go fish? He's going down the west wall towards the south gate. If he starts playing with it, the session could go on forever. The steelhead trout are tossed in one at a time. No seconds until Keiko swallows the first one. You can see it again. In his mouth, and it is gone. As the months go by, Keiko starts to enjoy the game. Swallowed. He swallowed the fish. He just took it down whole. When Keiko finishes his live fish, he gets dessert. Frozen herring are like candy bars to this whale. He gobbles them up instantly. But fishing seems more of a sport than a survival skill right now for Keiko. Our job is basically to guide him along and reward him at the key times. But that creates a personality which we've started to see, and that's Keiko. Got it. The key is to keep Keiko moving, both physically and mentally. Boredom is a big reason why captive orcas die at an early age. Now, a lot of us wondered if they went a little overboard giving the whale a big screen TV for late night viewing. A pack of murderers and thieves. Like swans of locusts, they descended. But Blazing Saddles actually piqued his interest. Talk begins about Keiko hitting the trail, a move to a floating netted pen in the North Atlantic. But that's when the big chill arrives between Keiko's owners, the Free Willy Foundation, and the aquarium where he lives. It became a battle for Keiko control <laughs> that could jeopardize Good his boy, safety. Keiko. Good boy, Keiko. So he has certain respiratory ailment and has tapeworms that he's been passing. I mean, the whale is healthy. And he's a, a cash cow for wherever he is. With so much money involved in his care and future, Free Willy is definitely not free. He's a moneymaker for both his owners, the Free Willy Foundation, and the Oregon Coast Aquarium, where he lives. Like any good story, this one now twists and turns into a whale of a political battle for control over Keiko. Stay with us for the inside look at the tug of war over the orca. The mammoth movie star boosted Newport's economy. $75 million and more than a million Keiko visitors just in his first year. He's been such a great ambassador for this community. He's become a real part of the community spiritually as well as economically. So there's no question but what he's going to be missed. It's been a fun ride uh, doing the Keiko project. Many observers believe money was at the heart of the battle between Keiko's owners and the aquarium. If I 
had a cash cow and I saw that cash cow about to disappear, I'd probably become very upset about it. The aquarium denied it was struggling to keep Keiko. We just updated our master plan this spring that shows that Keiko will, would be gone um, in the next two years. In the summer of 1997, the foundation began taking more control over the whale. His aquarium handlers were asked to become foundation staff and sign confidentiality agreements. Trainer Mark Trim refused and quit. Um, he's about as releasable to the open ocean as I am. The aquarium had to close Keiko's gallery for two days. They were concerned when he was butting his head against the windows. Keiko's Everybody aquarium veterinarian quit, claiming he was health. denied access and records. What I have said is that I think there's reason for concern regarding his health. We did a, have an occasion uh, earlier this summer in July to treat Keiko for bacterial and fungal respiratory infections. That was October of 1997, the first time the public had heard about Keiko's health problems during the summer. The foundation blamed the aquarium for filtration problems in Keiko's pool, leading to the infections. Aquarium staff blame the foundation for not fixing the filters. We're not trying to make it a public fight at all. There's nothing in any agreement that we have, uh, as far as I know, with the Free Willy Keiko Foundation and the aquarium that allows the aquarium to say that he can't be released and to stop the release. To stop the arguing, the U.S. Agriculture Department, which grants the permit to keep Keiko, led a team of doctors to check on the whale. They determined he was fine. Keiko's owners decided to go shopping for a new home. Work begins in Washougal, Washington on a giant floating sea pen. Measuring 250 feet long, 100 feet wide, it would be 60% larger than Keiko's Oregon home. Sort of a halfway house for Keiko, somewhere in the North Atlantic Ocean, where he was born. And we will care for Keiko for... Uh, in June of 1998, Iceland agreed to accept care. the whale back into his homeland. It's a country with a long tradition of hunting other whales for food and orcas for profit. There are about four dozen orca whales in captivity worldwide, about half in the U.S. Most are from Icelandic waters, although Iceland banned whale hunting a few years ago. I don't think this is very good for uh, Icelanders to start hunting whale, to have whale here. Here in Iceland, this is the reason they agreed to let the big guy come home. They expect to see a big boost in tourism. Icelandic whale watching is blossoming into a moneymaker, and Keiko could be a big draw helping to bring worldwide attention to the country like he brought attention to Newport. Do you think he'll bring a lot of people or just some people? Just some people. Um, but I don't know. It's hard to tell because it's far, far away from here where he is now. There's not too many people here. Everybody's talking about moving off the land to, to, the, to Reykjavik, at the, you, know, you know, Big Apple in Iceland. But this is a very good place to be in, Vestmanaer Islands. The big question, though, is whether Keiko is moving in to eventually move out into the wild. How realistic is it that it still will be moving towards release? It's, very, it's certainly our goal of the organization is to pursue that, but we're going to stop when it's the appropriate thing to do, so we really don't know. It takes 14 semi-trucks to get all the pieces of Keiko's new home from Washuga, Washington to Boeing Field in Seattle. Even with the world's largest commercial freight aircraft, a Russian Antonov, all the pipes, moorings, and anchors won't all fit in one trip to Iceland. They've got about 180,000 pounds of parts here. Well, Keiko won't have to go in anything this large because he only weighs about 9,000 pounds. In fact, even with the water and his crate, he'll still weigh far less than all this. Keiko's new home is the Westman Islands, part of Iceland just south of the mainland. Keiko will live in Kletsvik Bay by the town of Vestmanjar, population 5,000. With almost 24 hours of daylight in the summer near the Arctic Circle, 
Crews work in three shifts, 20 hours a day, to assemble the pen. Divers do much of the work. Massive anchors on the ocean floor are installed to keep the floating pen in place. Although Keiko will be confined, he'll be back in the ocean, able to communicate with other whales. But no one really knows what's going to happen to this whale when those concrete walls are removed. The orca world is full of whale chatter, a series of clicks and calls to locate food and for navigation. Whales don't have vocal cords like us. Instead, they make sounds by blowing bursts of air through their sinuses, behind what looks like their forehead. Besides a new home, Keiko needs a new seat for his return flight. He's 2,000 pounds bigger and more than a foot longer than when he arrived in Newport a year and a half ago. He needs a custom-built box to comfortably hold him floating in water for the flight to Iceland. I just got off the phone with the Pentagon uh, and we're talking to the Air Force about using a C-17. So in a perfect world, we'd use a C-17. It is possible that we could, because the nice thing about the C-17 is it could probably take off right from Newport and fly right to Vespignar. The U.S. Air Force agrees to fly Keiko home nonstop in a C-17 cargo plane, chartered for $375,000. With two mid-air refuelings, it will get Keiko to Iceland in just eight hours. That's about half the time it took from Mexico to Oregon. All is ready for Keiko's final flight home. One of the toughest days for all of us Keiko fans was moving day. I'll never forget seeing Keiko 1 with our beloved orca on board flying over the empty pool at the Oregon Coast Aquarium and disappear over the horizon. Next, the goodbye and good luck, a day many thought would never arrive. September 9, 1998. Time to wish the whale farewell. I've been here at least once a month all the time he's lived here. This is the last time I will be doing this. The aquarium, including the gallery, are now closing. It is 8 o'clock. We came from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way to see Keiko. I think he needs to have a chance to be free. And if it works out, I think that's great. It'd be a good experience for him if he's going to go out in the wild again because he has to know how to like survive in the wild and that'll give, just kind of give him a taste of it. Some Newport High School students are in the Goodbye Gang. They were fifth graders four years ago when they helped raise money to whisk the whale to Oregon. I think it's good that he's leaving, especially since he's been trapped up in the, our aquarium so long and he's been such a tourist attraction. He needs to go free. That's what we wanted him to do. It's like a dream coming true for me and for him. One of Keiko's last visitors is someone very special. A man who knows more about wild killer whales than anyone in the world. Ken Balcom has tracked wild orcas in the San Juan Islands of Washington State for decades. The marine biologist had offered to rehab Keiko here in whale country long before Oregon was selected. Well, I think for uh, at least the kids of the world, they're saving a whale. Keiko seemed to know it was time to take a final bow. The last time in his life he'll ever see the public up close. <laughs> We can't know if Keiko wanted to go, but the night before his journey, in a rare moment, Keiko slept in his medical pool, the section where they would lift him up and out forever. Early afternoon, on moving day, Keiko's trainers coax him back into the med pool. Keiko! 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 He's definitely healthy, and that was critical. Keiko has now gone into the med pen. He picked up the hand sign, he's in the med pen, the next step the sling will go around Keiko. I hear we're about a half an hour ahead of schedule when you're asking a 10,000 pound killer whale to gate. It's his choice to do it when he would like to. So we certainly had to allot enough time, but he chose to go in right away. They rub him with cream to keep his skin moist for the trip. 
Hundreds of photographers and reporters from around the world teeter on special scaffolding to record a moment many predicted would never arrive. As you can see now, the stretcher, the nylon stretcher is being uh, lowered down into the, into the water. The water is lowered and a giant sling glides over and into Keiko's tank. It's time to begin a whale of a ride. Here he comes, here comes Keiko. You can see Look him now being that. lifted into the air. You see all of him now. Oh. He seems, uh, well, he's not flopping around, he's very stable. And they're about to make the, the lift across into the box. There's and again, Keiko. he's not been sedated uh, for any of this, so he is fully aware of what's happening. Barely moving a muscle, Keiko looked like he knew what was about to happen. After all, this would be his fourth flight. That is a very emotional picture as he now is free over the, over the pool. They're getting ready to make the lift. That's a powerful crane, can lift 40 tons with that stretcher. And Ropes carefully stabilize the stretcher and Keiko gets a final whale weight check. At 9,050 pounds, he's gained almost 2,000 pounds of muscle since he arrived in Oregon. The 21-foot-long whale eases into his box with just a few feet to spare on each end. The crate is filled with seawater to keep Keiko floating, but he doesn't have much wiggle room. They don't want him to flail about. Their biggest fear is him overheating. A bucket brigade works feverishly to pack the whale in ice. You have a UPS employees, of volunteers, local volunteers, and the members of the Free Willy Keiko Foundation uh, who are passing those buckets of ice water up into the truck to keep uh, Free Willy, to keep Keiko cold. Fans lined up two hours before Keiko's motorcade started along Highway 101. I kind of feel sad that I took it for granted that he was here and he was we had a whale in Newport, and now I think I, I'm really sad that he's gone. The road was closed for the celebrity's three-mile procession to the airport. It is uh, really showing the best side of the humankind. It's a whale of a private parade. Well-wishers around the world watch Keiko moving on down the road to freedom. You can see right there in that shot, he is on the way. They're moving very slowly right now, and he's driving right down the center of uh, Highway 101, not uh, using uh, just one lane of it. Uh, so it looks like it's uh, going to be the way it's going to go. At the airport, it takes a team effort of muscle power to push the 42,000 pounds of whale, water, and crate onto the loader. And there he goes right there. They're giving it just some muscle power to get him going. The Air Force crew is ready for Operation Lift Keiko, his next giant leap towards freedom. You got the TV2, he's departure roll now. You can uh, proceed as requested before. Use caution, wake turbulence, departing heavy C-17, runway 34. Now you see him, his rot he is rotated there and he is off the ground. Keiko's airborne, switch into departure. Keiko 01 Heavy, change the departure, have a good flight. And along the Oregon coast, right below Air Keiko, a gray whale suddenly surfaces, as if to wish Keiko a fond farewell. This is a close shot of it right now, and uh, just a fantastic sight. Have a great journey. We wish you well. It's been a long journey. We've enjoyed every minute of it. We wish you Godspeed and good luck. So how do you design a one-of-a-kind home for a whale of a movie star, especially when it's a floating home in the North Atlantic Ocean? We'll show you next, and you'll also learn why Iceland, with a long tradition of hunting whales, agreed to let the most famous whale in the world come home to live in peace. It's morning over Greenland. Air Keiko is in its seventh hour of flight. There are no in-flight movies or meals for this special passenger. Just more ice in his transport box. The cabin temperature is 50 degrees. With the marine mammal, they have a problem with overheating. That's why we added about, about a ton of ice as well. Keiko is calm, his heart rate constantly monitored. His keepers surround him with rubbing and reassurance that all is well. Just eight and a half hours after leaving Oregon, Keiko arrives in Iceland, where it's mid-morning.
The Air Force plane breaks some landing gear on touchdown, leaving the aircraft blocking a runway and closing the airport for several days. But the Keiko cargo is fine. He mostly napped, took cat naps, and we mostly watched him taking cat naps. Children here got out of school early to welcome their new neighbor. This is a crowd in a town that only has about 5,000 residents. We would like to welcome Keiko, the newest member of our community, to Iceland, to Westmanair, with the hope that one day he will be totally free. I think it's really great that Keiko is coming because, you know, this is his natural habitat. I think it's spending a lot of money for uh, a fish, <laughs> a whale. I viewed it as an implicit promise to children that there was a movie and it captured the imagination of the world, and particularly the children of the world. And if Keiko didn't go somewhere near free, as close as we could get him, we felt that was sort of a lie. There is plenty of security guarding this movie star. Keiko's keepers had received a series of letters where someone was threatening to kill Keiko with poisoned fish. Police questioned a man they believe sent the letters from a town on the other side of Iceland, a place that was considered for Keiko's new home. We are very happy that the police has, uh, you know, taken strict measures in doing whatever can be done to avoid any incidents here in the Westman Islands. All goes well on Keiko Day. Keiko and his box are picked up with a construction crane at the harbor and placed onto a barge. Three tugboats nose the barge out about a half mile from the harbor to his bay. A flotilla of hundreds of photographers and reporters motoring along in his wake. At the pen, Keiko is swung out of his box in his sling and lowered gently into his native waters, finally back to where he was born. What's interesting to me is you don't see Keiko moving around very much. There's, you don't see that tail waving away. Interesting to see what happens as it gets closer to the water whether he's just, uh, you know, tired from a long trip and just say, boy, just get me in the water. But they are working hard. Now that he's up here, you're going to see this thing go fairly quickly. Yeah, I see uh, one, two, three divers in the water. There's going to be more here in just a minute. Very careful right now to make sure that he doesn't get tangled up in those ropes because once that sling hits the water, they really have to pull that out of the way very quickly so he doesn't get tangled up into anything. This is it. This is the final moment for Keiko, Oregon's killer whale. There he goes, folks. Keep a good eye on him. Keiko in his home waters. He's in. For a few seconds, nothing happened. I think his hesitation was twofold. One is, this is a new place. Where am I? What killer whales are not terribly bold, uh, when, especially when they're singular. They're very cautious. Male killer whales tend to be extremely cautious. He then moved forward a foot or two and saw the edge of the pool and saw how big it was and I'm sure all the noises of the harbor and the, and the, the, other, the other sightings and, and, and sounds that were coming through the net structure into his area caused him to hesitate just a minute. Suddenly, Keiko pumped his flukes to swim clear of the stretcher. Free Willy was as close to freedom as he'd ever been in 19 years. The whale dove deep to explore his new world. Take a look at what's underneath here. He sends out a call. <coughs> Who's there? Dozens of fish in a bay teeming with sea life. Keiko's happy and hungry. When herring is tossed in, he gobbles it up on the go. He's like a new puppy, a kid on Christmas morning, a whale on its way to the wild. It's breathtaking to behold, so magical the moment for all of us on his journey including his longtime veterinarian. He swam into his new surroundings and he ate immediately. And um, as a veterinarian, as a medical supervisor, and as a human being, it can't, it can't get any better. But it can. Keiko is so close to true freedom. The final leg of his journey is just beginning. A new home halfway around the world waited for Keiko, a place where he was first known as Siggy when he was captured there as a baby. You'll learn more about his volcanic birthplace, a land of survivors. See how we all held our breath as Keiko took a nosedive into his new surroundings. And what about his future? 
How will they decide if he can go free? Is he too timid? You're eavesdropping on Keiko. You're hearing Keiko communicate in his new home with a new friend. Hydrophones recorded his underwater conversation with a harbor porpoise that swam into his bay, just outside his netted pen. What Keiko really needs, though, is a pod of orcas to swim near and befriend him. Killer whales live in close-knit social groups called pods. Keiko's pod is around here somewhere off Iceland's coast. Each pod has its own dialect. The hope is Keiko will recognize his family's voices. Within the next two years, scientists will determine if Keiko will be able to survive on his own. Blow, down, go. Keiko's behavior is studied. His sounds are recorded and connected to his movements. Live fish training will resume this winter. I'd like to you know, predict that I'd have this bay pin open and allow him to be swimming to the bay by next spring. That'd be a wonderful thing to do, but I'm gonna leave it up to him. And, and uh, he seems to be doing very well so far. And, and, and you know, after day one, and we'll just continue to keep our fingers crossed and work hard at what we're doing. He's a friendly guy, but maybe too much of a softy to survive on his own. Although killer whales are top dog in the ocean, Here comes the shark. Here comes the shark. some people worry that if Keiko is released, whale hunters would capture Keiko once again. <coughs> but Keiko's name means lucky one in Japanese. This 21-year-old has some time left in his race towards release. Male orcas live to be about age 30. Besides, Icelanders have one of the longest life expectancy rates in the world. And here in the Westman Islands, they're especially strong. Hopefully in the spring when we get ready to, to see if Keiko's doing well, to, to let him actually swim out in the bay itself, um, that'll be netted off and we'll just undo some zippers and, and slowly open the panels and like the med pool in Oregon, allow him to take his time uh, exploring coming in and out of the uh, structure itself so he can see what the bay is like. Release is a long shot, but so is this, bringing the whale back to where he was born. Two and a half years ago, this was a pipe dream. It's a whale of a tale, with more to be told. Keiko is already sampling some of the live fish swimming into his pen. He's far more energetic in Iceland than he even was here in Oregon. When the big windstorms sweep through, Keiko dives deep down into his home where it's a bit calmer. Next, we'll explain what will happen to Keiko if he can't make it all the way to freedom. Twelve million dollars in private money has been spent on housing and caring for Keiko since he left Mexico almost three years ago. The Free Willy Keiko Foundation is committed to caring for Keiko for his whole life if he can't make that final leap to freedom. And we do wish him good luck. For all of us here at COIN TV, I'm Jeff Gianola. Thanks for sharing Keiko's journey home with us. Good night. If you would like to add Keiko's life story to your home video collection, send your check for $21.95 to Keiko's Life Story, 2515 Northwest Nikolai, Portland, Oregon, 
9-7210. Or use your credit card and call 1-800-651-1932. You can also order online at www.coin.com.